Hey everyone, welcome back. We're gonna be playing some Sejuani Gangplank Plunder today. If you guys have been paying attention to spoilers at all, I'm sure you guys saw that today's had a lot to do with Bilgewater and Noxus Plunder. And that's pretty kind of pretty crazy to me how much it might change the archetype because Bilgewater Feliord Plunder has been so good for so long that it really hasn't changed all that much. Like you can have a few tech cards, which pers personally I really enjoy Monster Harpoon. But other than that, the most recent cards have been like I have Nag Kavaros, Spirits Unleashed, and they're both really good, but they don't like fundamentally transform the way the game or the deck plays. And so adding in like Noxus as a region for Plunder, I think will be really interesting to see once the expansion does come out. So for now, I thought we'd play a good old Sejuani Gangplank Plunder stream. I love this deck. It got me to Masters last season. It's so fun. It's like aggro, but mid-range, but so many decisions, cool champs. It has everything that I really want from a deck right now. And it's still doing pretty well. It's so consistent over the years of Legends of Terra. I don't know. I just, I can't get enough of it. It's one of my favorite decks. So we'll get back into it, see how it does. Um, Brom, Brom Swain. I don't expect us to do well into that. Let's see here. Sorry about the audio cuts out when I'm looking on the other page. Yeah. Uh, so Jordan Gameplay has 54% win rate right now. So we'll see how it does. <clears throat> I think, I think I'm fine with this. I think. I'm not a huge fan of Parley or Jagged Butcher on turn one, honestly. Shell Shocker is my favorite one drop. But I think we take the Jagged Butcher here. Because even if we don't get the Planet Trigger, we're at least getting units on board, which is still nice. Nice, that feels good. I like our curve too. Uh, Test Speaker turn three. Or, excuse me, turn two on their turn is really good, obviously. And then we have turn four, turn five. So if we hit a good three drop, which actually we don't have many good three drops in the deck, I don't think. Yeah, we kind of skip over the three mana spot. We have tons of two drops, tons of four drops, but not many, no three drops, I don't think. Um, which obviously it's okay because it makes room for extra spell mana being saved up. But it also lets us just go wide if we hit like two drop plus one drop. I'm happy to develop here. I suppose I could have like a... Ice Shard or Avalanche. I'm not really sure what to expect from this deck. But I'm willing to develop into it. Um, we push a lot of damage here. Okay. That could actually be kind of bad here. That Stance Swap could kill these two for free. Okay. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. This thing staying alive is pretty decent for us. It could actually get a pretty interesting keyword. We trade on their board. I don't know if that's fantastic for us or not. Let us get going. Problem could be problematic. What are we looking to do here? Bjerg into Gangplank. Uh, can't actually kill Brom next turn. We can't kill him either if we save Gangplank plus Harpoon next turn. So maybe it's just Spirits Unleashed into Gangplank. I'll pass though. I want to see if they'll take the attack. If not, I think we're fine. Because if they're going to get the portal anyways, I figured maybe they'd attack first for it. I think I'm supposed to make it rain, right? It'll put him down to four. No, because then they'll just block. Okay. I guess we'll just let this go. I don't think we can do too much about it. If we get quick attack, that'll be interesting. Yeah, okay, we did. Break their legs. Please no brittle steel. Or troll chant, that'd be bad. Okay. 
Yeah. I mean, this matchup seems really bad for us. But I think I was supposed to play something when they played Braum. Like, I was supposed to just probably just rip the Spirit Unleashed. Although, I don't know if that would have made much of a difference. Like, we're still not out of it. I don't know if we're ever killing Braum. <laughs> I'll do this, because it won't actually damage Braum, so he won't level up. And then... It'll kill the Poro. I actually don't know... Hmm. Wait, were we not supposed to... Use that there? Because... No, he would get tough, but it wouldn't matter, right? Yeah, I think that was a mistake, right? Because the Poro would still live, and then it'd still just be vulnerable. Our eyes lead to hidden paths. Hmm. I think I messed up several times in this. I guess that's what I get for not knowing how to play against Bob Vladimir. Yeah, uh, I think... Oh, and we just lose to Juani. Yeah, uh, that's a little annoying. Man, I hate throwing card games so much. I can deal with being bad at other card games or other games, but something drives me absolutely bonkers when I throw games like that. I think I made a ton of mistakes that game, but the rest were kind of like almost almost forced errors after I made that like, decision not to play Spirits Unleashed. From the rest, I was kind of just like playing cards hoping it worked out. Where I think we would have been in a lot better spot if I just played the Spirits Unleashed a little bit earlier. At that point, I think I was just supposed to not care about giving them a stupid Poro, right? And then work on getting our champions leveled up. That's probably the way to go with that. Ooh, Riven Victor. I haven't seen this in a while. That's pretty cool. I'm very curious what we draw here, because I'm not confident that if we open attack, we'll hit the plunder trigger. Yeah, that's perfect. My warning on turn two is just so good. And we get a fearsome. I love it. Okay, that's in insanely good for us, because that means we can also save our Tusk Speaker for next turn. Obviously, it's so good when you're on your opponent's turn, getting the plunder trigger like that. Developing an overwhelm unit, you know, it feels really good. I imagine... We'll be in a really good spot to just brace them down before they really get their combo off. Like we're, we're going to be going wide. So they're not going to be able to keep guys like this alive very long. We're going to get our champions leveled pretty early on. I'm surprised they didn't attack. I wouldn't have blocked. Or if I did block, I just lose a, a unit for free, right? Oh, do they have like a rolling death? Just a mystic shot, sure. That's still fine. I only really wanted my um thunder trigger. I think I'm gonna develop this now. No, that's stupid. I guess it's kind of like a thunder trigger later on. But I want to get my thunder triggers leveled up so we can level up our champions like ASAP. More double warning shots actually kind of crazy. Now we can play Gangplank this turn. He'll be on four. And as soon as we play Sejuani, the second warning shot will do it. Like, I imagine they have some way of giving him vulnerable, right? But I kind of have to rip it at this point. I don't think we gain anything by playing just Tusk Speaker. Like, this really puts the pressure on them. Even if it goes really bad, we just play Sejuani next turn. 
And then the following turn we'll have our gangplank again. I love ghost bucking. I think it's such a silly mechanic. Not even like a bad mechanic, but I just think it's like funny. Because it's kind of hard to explain to new players in like magic and stuff. It's like, well, this kind of like fizzles the attack or whatever. Hmm, that's kind of tricky. We can use a parley. <laughs> okay. I mean, it works, right? It gets them there. But, uh, I was gonna say, if they, if they didn't do that specifically for using Fervor, we could've just, like, parlayed it to get an extra plunder trigger next turn. We're still, we're still feeling pretty good, though. So now we can go Sejuani. Thank goodness we actually tapped out another plunder trigger to get this turn, which is really good. Because now we can level her up, and then burst speed warning shot we can use if we need to this turn. We can use it next turn if they finally get their combo off, anything like that. We're looking pretty good. And I don't know if they'll be able to do 6 damage right away. Because, like, they wouldn't have used Fervor Mystic Shot. They would have used, like, Mystic Shot, Mystic Shot Flock on Gangplank last turn or something. J Madara. J Madarda. That's a Foundations card, man. I've, like, never seen that. Like, literally, I've probably seen that only once or twice in my life. I know of his name, but I, I, do, I wouldn't even have remembered what his card does. No, I don't think we need to do that. I think we can just do this, right? I think this is fine. I don't think I need to use this. We just save this. Next turn we'll just play Gangplank, and then what are they going to do? They can't kill us as long as they have Sejuani on board. That is really cool though, with all the little uh, forging, reforging, you get like a ton of jaw. That's pretty cool. Does he only have one voice line? The time of machines is now. When my song ends, men die. Metal is perfection. Energy core upgraded. Treasures of the ages for a price. It's pretty good. Yes, of course. Always forward. Okay, can we just win if we attack? I think so, right? We have one, two, three, four, five Nexus damage in hand. Mm, like Exploderator plus something would actually be pretty bad. Publish or perish. Get out of here. Obsolete. Hmm. Well, I'll keep damage off Sejuani. This is guaranteed to do us one next damage anyways. And it'll keep our two units nice, nice and healthy. And then... I don't think they have any response, and then we can just finish them off. Good steel and a good future. 
All right, good game. You love this to see it. The warning shot will evil. I feel like I never run to JSLUX anymore. I know it's definitely fallen off the meta a little bit, but I'd like never see it. Yeah, it's still the fourth most played, but it's not something I see very often. Ooh. What do we like here? Dylan Rye Warden's pretty cheeky. I think I'm kind of into it, but I might just pass. Pass the Mario Warden, look for one drops. So Champions are so important. Like, I have to dig for champions, I think. We have one solid turn two play. Lots of us getting other good stuff is pretty solid. I think we're happy to take just a Mario Warden here. I'll put the pressure on them. I think this is fine. Hmm. Wow, that kind of stinks. Let's look it in there. It's a pretty good blocker on turn two. Like, that really hurts our deck. Why are they running an eight cost card? Feel the rush? Oof, do not like that. I'm setting this up so next turn if we play Spirits Unleashed, it'll kill this one. Hmm, this is really bad. I do not know if we win this. I'm looking to turbo love our champions. We're not putting any board pressure on them for a while. Just like, get Gangplank, get Sejuani. This is so obnoxious though, like I do not know how to deal with these cards. <laughs> if you guys watched yesterday's video, I really struggled to kill those things. Uh, I'll take this attack though. Okay, I'm very happy with that, so I didn't get to re-equip the Darken Spear. This is so weird, like Fiora Ramp? Or it, it might be a Warm Mother's Call deck, probably, right? Warm Mother's Call, Feel the Rush. Yep, that guy's pretty big. Wow, not good. That's a ton of stats we're gonna have to work through. That's actually a fantastic steal. I need to save some damage here. This also sets us up to die to the Make It Rain next turn. But my goodness, that's bad. <laughs> I'm going to open Make It Rain so they don't have time to attach the equipment here. Oh, I could just do this too. I probably just want to get such our Gangplank on the board though, right? We lose to single combat, but I think... I don't know if we can afford to not develop anything. Like, what else would we do this turn? Just just play a Spirits Unleashed? And then they attack next turn? I don't know if that feels very good. I'm gonna take the attack. Right? Cool. I think I'm fine with that. We kill one of their big units. They have a ton. Like, I, I don't know. I think our goal is just like chip some damage into as much as we can. We have some interesting removal spells now. If we draw our Sejuani, we're looking really good. Whoa. That kind of stinks. That's really annoying. We can't concerted sort of strike that. Or Monster Harpoon it right now. Mm. I guess it's just Shell Shocker into Concerted Strike? That doesn't feel great. But I guess we go for it. Oh, wow. I mean... That's pretty decent. <laughs> but then we just... 
we just die in the swing back now? Like if we kill Anaka, we're forced to lose our gank. No, we we'll lose gank flank. Yeah, I don't think we can win now. Mm, that's brutal. Cool deck, but I don't know what we're supposed to do about it. Their stats are just so huge. Obviously, getting a Sejuani would be nice, but I'm sure there was some way we could have played this differently. Those troll scavengers felt really bad. My goodness. Like a 2 minute 3 4, that's so bad for our deck. It takes at least two units for us to work through it. And the badger bears are like five fives. Plus the equipment. Oh, I don't know. That seems tough. That seems like a tough matchup. But again, I'm sure I did some things wrong. I'm... Maybe like if we kept a super aggressive hand, if we kept the double and Rye Warden. But I don't feel like that accomplishes much. Again, they just get like eaten up. Our hand kind of was clunky, like... Monster Harpoon that couldn't kill anything except Braum. And like just a Shell Shocker. Or um yeah, Shell Shocker instead of like a Sejuani that late in the game always feels bad. But I feel like that should be a matchup we're okay with. Like I could have I could have not taken that gangplank attack. So he wouldn't have been so weak. And just played the long game. Kinda just tried to stall out the game until we found Sejuani. Maybe that was the play. Kaisa Sivir. Don't know what to do about that. I actually like this whole hand though. They have a lot of the weird one drops for keywords. I. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Sometimes I feel like my decisions just get so punished. <laughs> I'm like. Really? Out of all the keywords to get. Wow, that's brutal. You still get to hopefully push some overwhelm damage this turn at the very least. If not, we guarantee we get our plunder trigger, so I'll just like keep this guy up for a little while. Yeah, if this is what happens though, we just win. Cool. Uh, we get to play Spirits Unleashed soon. Knock off Oidling's Spell Shield. That's a fantastic draw. We'll take some damage. It's a race, essentially, and I don't think we gain anything by, like, chump blocking this dude. Doing some Fortune Overwhelms is kind of decent, but I think they're going to be dropping their, I don't know, creepy Overwhelm person. I don't know the name of the card up at the top of my head, but the, like, 6-6 six, six Overwhelm once it evolves, that could be pretty bad. But we can push some extra damage here if we want by using a parley. Hmm. I think I'm pretty happy to take this attack. I do think I want to save parley. But we push a significant amount of damage more if I use Parley now. We won't be able to activate Plunder next turn. Let's try it. This will get a Ranger's Resolve or something out of the water, in, or out of the hand in case we draw like a Make It Rain later on. Cool. I'll still get now. The fact that they had to waste this Vulnerable on our 4-2 Overwhelm is pretty good. I think I'm honestly most spooked of like a Valor into a quick attack weapon or something. That's a good draw. I know what I'm worth. Yep, we'll take it. We'll just drop our Bjerg. Our little dude will die, unfortunately. We need to place a Juani next turn. She won't be leveled, though. Doesn't matter. 
Maybe it does. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's not worth it because it'll be warning shot to put her up to four. We play Sejuani that it won't uh, leave us enough mana to play make a rain to level her up if they try a single combat or something. She has enough health that I think I'm good to just not use the warning shot here. Warning shot is so valuable against like a Kaisa deck um, later on as our way to freeze the board. I always find it funny like the card flips upside down, but this is a pretty good attack. If they play like a crazy big unit, we just don't have to attack with a 4-5 for now. Stand and fight. Oops! I don't know what I was scared of. They played a unit and I just didn't attack with- I was supposed to attack with the Bjork. Oopsies. That was a little bit silly. Um, wow, that was so bad. <laughs> sure. Okay, but I, hopefully we don't throw the game now. We have, um, two spells to trigger plunder. To get Sejuani level, the warning shot, that's pretty good too. Alright, I'll drop Make It Rain. Either it hits Nexus and levels up Sejuani, or knocks off Silver Spell Shield, that'll feel pretty good. And we still have double make, uh, warning shot to work, make up for it. Yep, that's perfect. And now this is literally drops them down to one, the double warning shot. So if we hit like any other pink spell, Spirits Unleashed, or any such warning, overwhelm damage, gang plank attack. Like, we're looking pretty good. I, was by I definitely did did miss some damage by attacking Babbling Bjerg. Like, they would have been forced to block with their Broadwing. Adding to the arsenal. I'll just wait until they attack. Because I don't want the Keg to die to Kaisa's skill. What? Wait, wait, wait. She has formidable. Hmm. How many mistakes can I make? <laughs> and still win this game. <laughs> you can only throw so many games in Masters. I don't know. That's kind of funny. Got away with one there, but what can you do? do for now. That's so funny, I literally didn't even think about that. About the formidable. This looks pretty cool. Felios Pantheon Varus. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna play Jagged Butcher on turn one here unless I draw like a warning shot. The odds of them having like a Forsaken Bakai. I don't wanna waste it. It's better off, I think, if we just wait for a little bit. Ugh, Jeepers, this hand does not look pretty. Which I guess in hindsight, maybe I should have kept the parlay in my opener. I was really looking for stuff like Shell Shocker or mm, what you might call it, Morai Warden. Yeah, yeah. Nothing well, this is really bad. We're so slow. We should already have at least two Plunder Sugars by now. I'll kill some of their units while we can. Clear their board a little bit, but yeah, this one's looking a little sad. If we hit like Warning Shot right now, we can get bl double Black Market Merchant. They have gone long without justice, but keep hope alive.
Obviously, we do have our one one of Heal the Rush in hand. That's certainly nice. Whoa, that's a high roll. Alright, let's see. Parlay plus four mana? Okay, let's try it. I'm feeling a little bit lost in this one. I'm still playing for our Feel the Rush at this point. This is such a bad hand, I feel like. <laughs> like, we never do anything that worked. Test the speaker, make it rain, warning shots. Mariah Warden on turn two curve. A little awkward, but. I'll let this go and then just play Spirits Unleashed. Alright, turn six. Maybe our first Plunder Sugar? Hmm. This Zephyrus is actually a problem, too. He's almost leveled. I think I might just kill him. I don't want him to level. We can't. Oopsies, it's four mana. Okay, sure. I'll just drop my Black Market Merchant then. Mikhail's Blessing. That's another card I don't think I've seen played too often. I mean, they're both life stealing units. I need to get rid of them, right? They're, they're, they're super overhealing. I don't really know if that was worth it for them to take that attack. Cause like they're not really the aggressor at the moment. I guess they also just want to clear the way for the champs. I don't know if this is high roll or not. <laughs> it's a nice stat, but it doesn't look too great. He's probably leveling. I don't want them to get like another Calibrum or. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Crescendum? Yeah, that's fine. So we get to take this interesting attack here. We either get our Plunder Trigger. Sweet. Okay. I think I'm fine with that. We get our Plunder Trigger. They don't. They keep their 2 1 alive. We can hopefully just kill that pretty soon. Ferris is troublesome. We can't really develop Gangplank first in case they have a second one in hand. So we'll go make it rain, I think. Unfortunately, Mikael's Blessing doesn't remove Vulnerable from Gangplank since his Varus would be burst speed with the like Chains of Corruption. We're looking for Sejuani for sure. We can play Heal the Rush next turn. It's not bad. Yeah, that's the play. Hmm, that's pretty good. I don't think they have any way to interact if we just slam a Heal the Rush here. Like, they gotta have Unforgiving Cold. But their, our guy's health would be huge. That's pretty big. Like that, that's a pretty big turnaround if you resolve a field rush in this deck. Not getting Sejuani's vulnerable is a little bit troublesome. But it's still a crazy attack, right? They just don't know we have a moment of choice. What the heck? 
Why is that? Why does he get plus four? I don't understand this. When you play a spell, give it plus one. But he only casts two spells, right? I don't. I don't understand. Because I just played action various yesterday, I was so confused about how that worked. <laughs> All right, that's pretty big. That that's insanely big turnaround in this game. Our start was so slow, but uh, next turn we'll get parlay to l put them to four triggers. And the following turn, they'll still be insanely huge, right? Like, they can play a lot of equipment, I suppose. Oof. Uh, what do we need here? What do we need? I don't know if there's anything we can get here. Nice, okay. No elusive challenge or anything like that. That's pretty good. It does have Overwhelm, that's a little bit worrisome, actually. Uh, so I'm gonna do this. So they can't, like, push Overwhelm damage that way. Now if they attack, they'll have to attack into one of my champions. Hmm. I don't like that. Wow. Are we dead? Okay. I'm gonna get you. That's kind of crazy. Can't be on keywords. You gotta love it. Let's play our next game plank here. Next turn, how do we do this? Any any plunder activation will be crazy good here. That'll level up our champions so that when Gangplank attacks, it'll freeze the board. Sure. Yep. Okay. I don't know if we can win. <laughs> Unless we draw like another Sejuani. Man, I cannot believe they just came back from that. We had two 10 10 champions on board. Now we can't even attack into him. Well, we know it's in their hand, right? I think we have to take the attack. Oh gosh, I'm so bad at this game. No, I can't. Because we don't have the keg, and 8 damage wouldn't be enough. Well, then we just lose to Pantheon next turn. Jeepers, I'm so bad. What a crazy game. Oh my gosh, we actually top decked her. Man, that's brutal. Oops, what did I just do? Okay. We totally win that game if our hand's any more aggressive. Like if we had, you know, more than one plunder trigger by turn five or by turn six. I think my mulligan was just really bad. That kind of set it up. Well, like when you take a full mull, obviously you're kind of running that risk. But I should have thought it through more about maybe keeping parlay. Like look at this. I like this a lot. Turn one, Shell Shocker. Nice just for getting the attune or whatever. Um, but I like Monster Harpoon as a way to kill Zerath for sure. And I don't know if they have many units that they want to play on turn one. Like, they might play Forsaken Bakai, but I imagine it's more of an ancient clockling thing. Okay, yeah, yeah, that works too. I will block if they attack. I think. No, maybe I shouldn't. I'll leave him back. Yeah, I don't think there's any reason for me to block because um, there's a chance we might draw like a Make It Rain or a Parley or a Spears Unleashed. That kills it for free. Yeah. Okay. 
I mean, this is a guaranteed Thunder Trigger either way. So I think I'll go Tusk Speaker now. And then make it rain plus Black Market Merchant next turn. Now, do I want to push two overwhelm damage? I don't think I do, because like I said, I guarantee the Make It Rain. It just leaves us up as like an extra attacker threat. I think I'm fine with that. Because this could potentially push more damage if it gets like a free hit plus stays alive type thing. Like a Rockbear Shepherd. Or we could just trade with that. I suppose that's fine. I don't want to give them a landmark, but we're going to have to attack through this at some point. We'll have to level up our Gangplank before. So I'll just take this damage. Because I don't want to give them the landmark. Um, for next turn. If we want to develop in anything. I suppose it doesn't matter. That's an interesting Plunder Trigger, actually. I guess I could have blocked. It doesn't matter if they get a landmark here. So I think we took a little bit of damage for no reason there. This will leave up Monster Harpoon this turn. Feeling a little clunky. I think I was just supposed to block that thing. I don't know if it particularly really changed all that much other than we have like a few points less of life. Hmm. That's a lot of damage. Twelve damage. This clears the way for Gangplank to potentially attack next turn. Okay, I think we're good to just attack here. Sure. Puts our game playing in the range of Red of the Arcane, but they won't have a landmark. That's a good draw. Ballingberg's still good at this point in the game. Oh, what was that? Was that Gangplank's Parlay? No, it was just normal Parlay. I was gonna say, I probably should not have played that if that was Gangplank's Parlay. Okay. Hmm. That's an interesting decision. Whether or not we should throw away the first gangplank. No, right? We just block like this. Puts them down to two so they can't block gangplank. No, I can just block here and it'll die. I'm gonna get you. Oh, I've never met anyone like you.
We got really punished for playing Mariah in first, huh? Hmm. Clever. But still down to two health. Round start. Create a, some, a powder keg. So Spirits Unleash might actually kill them if they don't have a red negation next turn. Or, yeah, yeah. Because if they open attack, they probably are just going to pull the keg. Ooh, that does it though. Okay, so as long as we don't die this turn. Which I don't think is possible. They're gonna have to use like right of negation. All right, GG. That was kind of weird. Interesting game though. All right, let's finish on the win. Finish positive. Well, I think we're already passive. I think we started at zero LP. Maybe it was 15. Anyways, we gotta finish on a win. I mean, we did just have a win, but you know what? I mean, another one. I've been playing a lot of Magic Arena lately too, and I got to Masters in that for the first time in a few months since I hadn't really played it too much. But I've been having a lot of fun with that too. I want to get in Pokemon too. I've been trying to play some of the. Uh. PTCGO, PTCG po Pokemon Trading Card Game Online, is that what it's called now? Yeah. <laughs> no, live, I think the live is one. Yeah, okay. Look at this hand, pretty good, pretty good. Butcher and Mirai Warden into Beer Ground 4. I think I'm happy with that. What's with Fiora Brom? Is that a video that someone made or something? I don't know if I've seen that really. Fiora Brom, 51% win rate. This is so good if we get an attack in here. Turn one plunder is like crazy. So Tusk Speaker would be a good draw. Hmm, it's tempting too. I don't like that card. That guy's a pretty big bully for us. Love it. That's only in the bottom 10 cards for a deck, right? So this one will have to go for a while if we ever find that, but. We can just attack. And then pass. They only get to kill one, hopefully. Sure. I think I'm I have to be fine with that for now. Yep. We don't really have anything to do to punish them for ramping. That's a good draw. Probably just Spirits Unleashing the Butcher here, right? Yeah, I'm not going to make the same mistake last time. <laughs> well, let's do this first. That makes it so if they attack with the portal, we just kill it anyway. Do I just end the round so we start with Make It Rain into Gangplank? I think so. It is easy, see? I long for a worthy opponent.
I think we take the attack with Gangplank. They could have a freeze, but they don't kill anything. At least they don't kill him right away. They could like block with Fiora, freeze him, and then challenge him next turn. Also, another field of rush. That's kind of fun. Whoa, that's a ton of damage to take there. I feel like at that point you might as might be willing to, t uh, to lose your Brom, because that's like a lot of damage. I think I want to draw Sejuani, right? What? Did they mess it up? They killed it, killed it with the Badger Bear? That's actually pretty big for us. I don't think playing the Jagged Butchers is fantastic here. They can get really big when you play the Spirits Unleashed on a certain turn. They'll be 5-5s. Five um, I don't think we get punished from developing Shell Shocker here. Because I'm a little bit worried they might run very nice. They do. They run one copy of very nice. In that case, I'll just go Jagged Butcher. Single combat becomes dangerous for Fiora now. There are no tiny units. I don't like that. That's pretty bad. I think I have to take the attack, though. The reason I'm not attacking with these guys is because they give the Hearthblood Mender a free block. Well, I don't know if this specific, I should say, I don't know if this specific person's running very nice, but I looked up the most popular Fiora Brahm list. It's running two War Mother's Call, one Very Nice, one Judgment, as well as three Tiana, the Crown Guards, one Gorlith, three Sith, three Lady of, of, of Clouds. So we might be in for a beating soon if we don't finish off this job or finish off this game. Whenever I survive damage, so on a mighty poro. If they have buried nice, we kind of have to deal with it to a certain extent. So we might as well do it now, so that it pops on their next attack turns. So we'll have units to block with. They'd get so punished here if we have a morning shot or something. Maybe not, since if they're just Technic Brom. Yeah, this is very troublesome. Their late game is just so much more powerful than us. I guess we just start with Spirits Unleashed? Never mind.
Please not the one of Baron Ice, please, please, please. <laughs> We're pushing 28 overall in damage. It's pretty big. Right. That's pretty big. If it was anything else, like... Scythria or uh, Barrier Nice, that would have been so bad for us. They're going to have to let one unit go through, like if they're just blocking, right? This is a ton of overwhelm damage. Like, they can't keep Fiora alive, hopefully. They freeze here, but still lose uh, Fiora. Hopefully we don't lose many units. I don't have enough stuff in hand to keep going if we lose units here. Ugh, double Hushman's, yeah. That's pretty big. Again, neither of these even take damage, so... Oh, we killed Braum, that's good. Wait, that was so weird, didn't it? The, the Nexus Health still said they would go down to one, that's kind of weird. We should still be fine, though. Anaka, not good. Okay, thank goodness. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, maybe they'd just play Anaka next turn and open with that. Um, but if they did develop Anaka, we'd just, like, play Spirits Unleashed. I like that. And, like, literally, unless they have Barret and Ice here, I think we're good. This is a crazy match, my goodness. Heavy hitters. Again, they'll have to deal with every single unit. Obviously, Tiana's not dying anytime soon. <laughs> like, Harsh Winds plus Freeze gets in there. All right, good game. Wow, crazy game to end on. That was kind of fun. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm super excited about the new plunder cards coming. Um, I don't know. I figured we'd give it one more try. Uh, while well, it's still in its old state, we'll see how much it changes. I hope this archetype still stays relevant, though. It's so fun. Uh, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. I don't think I've anywhere close. Yeah, we're still super low. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys, you, you, what you guys have been playing. I always like hearing any new spicy deck ideas. Or if you've been enjoying the Rumble at all. I actually haven't been playing the Unlimited Champions mode at all. Uh, I don't mind Singleton, and I love Standard. The Standard is my favorite. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.